Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to On the Mic with the M. Fancy. Listen, we're just going to keep it real today. We're, we're, we're kind of winging it today, but we're going to say this. I'm going to start off by saying this. Men ain't shit and women ain't shit. I'm going to say that as a general fucking statement. Men ain't shit, women ain't shit. So we, so you can't, nobody be sending me, send me comments on my you know, I'm a good dude. You know, I try to do what I can do. Or women say, why are you going to put me on in that shit? No, because what's happening right now is society as a general is everybody's being thrown in the same fucking pot. The good right. guys, the bad guys, the bad girls, the bad dudes, and everybody's just saying everybody's shit. And that's not true. So today we're going to talk about that. And, and y'all have to make some decisions. And, and what I mean by that is Please don't rush into relationships quickly. Get to know the person. And Lord, please don't get her pregnant. And please, ladies, don't let him get you pregnant. Because that starts off a whole nother thing that's, that's a, a pretty ugly and pretty nasty situation that we've been seeing all the time. And you, you are living it. Some of y'all are probably going, look at this as shit. I'm living that shit he talking about. Yes, I'm talking to you. So all the people, you ain't quite there yet. You're like, you probably sit with a dude, watch. You say, hmm, I wonder if he's going to be that kind of dude going to be with me, you know, the rest of my life because I love him. He's cute. He smells good. All, all preliminary shit. That shit changes overnight. So it takes work. Real quick. Real, real quick. <laughs> We're going to talk about how people just have to make much better decisions. Don't don't be so impulsive. You know, because it saves you some problems down the road. And as I was talking talk before the podcast about the cause and effect. We always look at the effect. Badass kids, you know, bad relationships, you know, they hate each other, they so take care of responsibilities. <laughs> yes, it was all that shit. But yeah. if, you, if, if you step back for one second, those of you who have already in the effect stage, you already went there. So you go into this bullshit. But there's a lot of people who haven't gotten to the, the effect stage. You're actually in the cause phase. So mm-hmm. we're trying to give you some information so you can avoid being in a situation of a lot of people that you see are in the effect stage of their relationships and their lives. So we just want you to really stop thinking, stop being an emotional creature about relationships and actually think logically about relationships and who you're really looking at. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, especially for women, y'all emotional any goddamn way, T. So oh, you know what y'all do. Y'all was, go for anybody that looks good. Oh, my God, he smells good. I'm going to have his baby. That's what y'all do. So, so women, it seems like you wouldn't have to go there. I'm ready. I, I, didn't, I can't believe you just threw us out there like that. What I'm noticing, though, it seems like women are super emotional in the front end and men are super emotional on the back end, meaning... When we first meet, I got all the butterflies in my stomach, and I'm like, ah, yes, he smells so good. Oh, my goodness, he's so fine. Ah, he on my line. I can't wait till he call me tonight. Oh, yes, tell me good night. Tell me good morning. Tell me all of the sweet nothings in my ear, right? Yep. When we break up, oh. women just ice a lot of times. Yes. The emotions get shut down. Now we got boundaries. Now we don't want you on our line. And now y'all turn super emotional. I can't believe you did this to me. That's how we doing it. You just going to leave like that? Yeah. And then y'all get all the emotions, get the flaring. Y'all out there down on bending knees and whatnot, begging, trying to recruit your friends to come sing outside my apartment and whatnot. (laughs) That emotion thing go both. Wait. <laughs> well, T, I want to speak for the men. As men, we are not trained or taught to handle our emotions. We're we're actually emotionally immature. Yeah. Uh, at no stage in our lives growing up to become when we reach manhood, do anyone teach us how to handle our emotions? Nine times out of ten, they tell you if you're in pain, suck it up, shut the fuck up, man up. You know, so you, you don't really speak. You remain silent when it comes to emotional stuff. So you don't get to uh learn about your emotions or how to handle things emotionally you find out when you when somehow you get a young lady who you mm-hmm. like and you know it's beginning to be hard you know you know we, we, we're trying to show you a little love but you know we try trying to give you a heart and lay out there you know sing them cute sweat song or some shit like that you know you know like girl i love you love you baby no we ain't doing all that shit we're gonna try to you know give you a little bit of this and that but along the way 
we actually become infatuated with you guys. We actually mm -hmm. begin to, damn, I like her. You know, she's a good person. You know, she treats me well. You know, we don't argue a lot. And she's pretty easy going. And surprisingly to us, we now become emotionally attached to you in a weird sort of way. We don't even know how, we don't, we're so immature. We don't even know when we're con uh, connected. We're mm -hmm. just like, we were walking and walking and we got connected. We're still walking and walking. And like, I ain't connected yet. You've been con connected about five, six months that away. <laughs> You're yeah. still walking and, and talking. And then we get comfortable. As men, we don't know. We're emotionally immature. We're comfortable. So then we start doing things. Oh, you know, you know, she accept this, she accept that. And then y'all kind of give us the boundaries. Like, yeah, you can do, oh, you reached the boundary. Oh, can't do it. Go, go but so far. But then some of us are so immature that we do some stupid shit and think, oh, she'll accept anything I do. She accepted this. Oh, she got some boundaries. Well, she'll, she'll, get, she'll let me stretch until you get over the boundary. And then she shuts you down. And then she's like, I don't want to fucking date you no more. Mm -hmm. You don't listen to me. I try to tell you. Now we're surprised. Like, huh? What? You let me do this, this? Still don't know. And then you'll say, this is it. It's, it's over. And when you're like, over. It don't really hit us like, over? You, you, yeah. you have to go. We have to walk away from that. She's like, over? I'm not supposed to be about over. You call her. Oh, shit, she ain't picking up. No. I'm going to text you. Shit goes unanswered. Mm -hmm. You're like, what the fuck? She ain't even looking at my shit. So now... That emotion that you was attacked way back then now kicks in. You're like, because before, if you didn't give a fuck, you're like, ah, oh, fuck the fuck. I'm going to move on, find somebody else. But no, you're now attached. You are now emotionally attached. You don't know how to handle that shit. I mean, listen, I knew some dudes that <laughs> I'm going to say because it's college. I know a dude who was so pissed off at his girl back in the day who broke up with him. That Negro told me, and I quote, I'm going to go to her house and flatten all her tires. Yeah. Yeah. No, y'all get to acting out with that anger, man. That anger can become something else. Yeah. Those emotions can do something different. I mean, they both can. Absolutely. But for us, we can't control it. It's mm -hmm. new to us. Y'all, women, y'all deal with the emotion stuff. You deal with emotions sh shit all the time. For yeah. us, that, you know, emotions that we're not supposed to show, now we have them. Mm -hmm. We don't know how to fucking deal with them. So that's why you get the stalker or the guy who's, you know, try to kidnap you or do that crazy shit because he don't know how what to do with his emotions. But y'all do that to us. Y'all y'all do the things to us, make us connect to you, make you feel good about you that we, you know you'll never leave us. So it's all new to us. Yeah, it's and all get, it's all the woman's fault. I get it. I get it. <laughs> we done did that to you, you know. Told you yes. and then you just did your own thing, you know, and then thought she was supposed to stick around for it, and then was uh shocked when she left. That's that, I mean, and, and that, and then what happens is, as guys, we don't really talk. I mean, emotions is one of those things we don't sit around and talk about emotional shit. Men just don't do that. Mm -hmm. Um, and a society, you know, oh, you shouldn't talk about it. But then this is why men die early. Uh, men drink a lot. Uh, men use drugs because men don't deal with their their feelings and their emotions and you have to because we are human even though we're men we're still a human and we have to be able to learn how to deal with emotions um and that's how a lot of these relationships go bad because we as men can't deal with emotions women you are emotional and certain situations you get into you can't really talk about it because you, as a man you don't know how to talk about your emotions to another woman you can you can kind of tell her how you how you feel without really telling her how you feel you know because it's mm -hmm. jumbled up. It takes it takes a lot for us to say, okay, we need to get to, we need to become emotionally intelligent, and that takes work. And a lot of men don't even know where to start to do that. And usually, when it kicks in, is when we're in relationships with women, and when we're in a situation that we're we're, we're battling you, we're trying to understand you. Because again, y'all from Venus, we're from Mars. It's right. it's kind of hard to understand women. Y'all, you know, you you, you kind of give us the the I don't want to say the double face, but the two face, but you give us one emotion, it's really a null emotion, but we don't really know what that really means. So again, that goes back to communication. Communication has got to be key. So everybody has to be open to communication because if we don't, then we look at all the bullshit that, that happens if you, oh Lord, if you fuck around and have a baby, now it gets real, real nasty. Real nasty <laughs> with y'all. Dealing with y'all. Why with us though? Dealing with, I mean, Huh. Cause by that point it's like you know, acts of betrayal and act you know, acts of betrayal against the woman. 
that's how a woman is normally feeling, right? Mm-hmm. If the situation doesn't work out and we have a baby together, and I thought that we were going to be together, you know, kind of forever type of thing. And for whatever reason, forever didn't work out. Generally, the woman doesn't feel like it's her fault that, you know, forever didn't work out. It's your fault. And so it forever didn't work out for me. And now, like we said, you know, perhaps women feel tainted after they've given you a child and you're not their forever person. Because now I have to go find another man to take care of me and your child. Because whether or not you take care of your kid on the weekends or, you know, during the summers or send over a check or not, they're still going to be in the household ultimately with another man if I marry. So now, you know, perhaps a woman feels tainted. So you can understand a woman feeling scorned because she has a, a child by a man who's not willing to take care of her whole, wholeheartedly. And I feel you on that. And here's something else I was thinking recently. And I'm, I'm going to throw it out there. I was looking at some some different stories like with divorce courts, some other court shows, and it just it just bing hit me in the top of my head. I think maybe wrong, but I'm just gonna put it out there. I think women never ever get over the guy that she had a baby by because every day she looks at this baby who's a product of a relationship that she thought would end in marriage but it ended in disappointment so it's almost to me it's like women take it out not consciously maybe subconsciously like when you see that kid that looks like that guy who you thought your life was going to be white picket fence and all that beautiful shit it didn't turn out that way it's almost like a resentment i may be wrong is it a resentment towards the kid because now I, i'm stuck with this motherfucker i'm really got to, he didn't just leave and leave he didn't even left me with a baby and now I got to ask this goofy motherfucker to help take care of something he helped bring here. And I got to look at this kid every day and be reminded of the bad decisions that I made. Do women do women think, think like that? I think that women in generally, if you are in a situation that you're like struggling and struggling to... Um, maintain financially, struggling to maintain your energy, struggling to maintain a proper relationship, you're going to start resenting a lot of things. But if perhaps if you're a woman who is not finding themselves in a struggle financially, emotionally, energetically, in relationships, you're not going to resent much of anything in your life. So whether it's a child that you're resent, resenting, whether it's the family that you was born into that you start to resent, whether it's the neighborhoods that you are familiar with that you're kind of living in that you resent, people who um, kind of have struggles in their life, right? And mm-hmm. my opinion are the ones who feel the resentment and whether whatever you decide to resent in that life because of those struggles, that's that's just you. That's personal. Um, definitely you can harbor that within your child, but it's not, I don't think it's just specific to children. Um, mm-hmm. and I do think it but I, I do think it is specific to someone struggling. I don't think we talk about or see someone who was in a thriving, happy relationship, um, who is financially secure, you know, and mentally like stable and happy, who is resenting any parts of their life, especially like their children, who is them. Mm-hmm. And, and see, and, and, I, and I asked that question because there's another thing I was reading about uh, is the, the the lack of success of single mothers compared to single fathers. Mm-hmm. So it, I'm going to read this quickly. It says children raised by single mothers are more likely to fare worse on a number of dimensions, including school, social, emotional development, their health, success in the labor market, their risk of parental abuse and neglect, particularly by the living boyfriends who are not their biological fathers, more likely to become teen parents, likely to not graduate from high school, get more into drugs and alcohol. It's like the risk is greater from them than, let's say, a, a single father raising them. So I thought that is was that, weird. Uh, is, who's the source on that? Uh, this is the Brookings Institute. Um, send me the link on. Yeah, it's uh Brookings.edu, and look up articles. And did, and... did they cite there? Did they must have cited at the bottom of that? What did they cite? 
they it's, it's a pretty lengthy one so i'll i'll send it to you so you can take a look at it but basically they're saying uh a lot of things are educational wise because the mothers are not not making money to take care of the kids yeah so, so that's that's the thing that i was going to speak to as we speak about facts stats and statistics and all that good stuff that we're kind of making inferences off of a lot of these things it seems like mm -hmm. um i think that where you live at and your financial makeup is a bigger determinant of a lot of those factors than than no i wonder i can't make that statement i'm just wondering if where you're living at in your financial situation is that just as big as a determinant as a person being a single mother meaning um the single mother who lives in a poverty stricken um situation versus the single mother who's not who is well educated and who has a good job who can maintain her children does the does the children have the same outcomes when you compare the two because when we speak about the single mother, we speak about the single mother as if there is not an education difference in mothers, mm -hmm. single or not. And there's also gonna be a um, a financial difference in the you know upbringings of these children. So we can't like just negate those factors when we're talking about, um, you know, raising children in single households because if what we're saying is that 80 percent of the children being raised in single how parent households or with single women are being raised in poverty stricken you know situations and this is the outcome then you know let's talk about the entire situation as opposed to pretending as if you know just having a woman um who probably is raising the kid against her own will by herself um is just doing just like this crap ass poor job just because she wanted to. That's, yeah, that's true. It's getting fucking weird at this point in the, in the Instagram, <laughs> you know, the, in the in the podcast realm that we're trying to drive home, you know, that eighty percent of people were raised by single mothers, and now you know the whole population is fucked because of that. Like the whole population's not screwed, believe it or not. So if 80% of people came out of single, you know, parent households or from a single mother, then I mean, what 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 would the population really be looking like if it's really as bad as, you know, the stats are kind of speaking to them being? It's I, I just feel like it it deserves a little more investigation. Yeah, and, and that's why I say I, I always when I hear someone you like on, on on IG and on the other podcast, you hear this shit. This that shit sound crazy. And, and they, then I, I'm sorry, but they never cite their source. That's why. No, I, no, they don't. And that's why I, I had it pulled up. I said, let me send it to you. And in fact, you know, people who watch in the podcast were able to see it too, because I think I put it up on the side so you can take a look at it. Because we deal with facts. We don't yeah. bullshit our ass. We don't go out there just for the, the clickbait and that bullshit. We want these inf this information to make you better. We want you to make good decisions for your life. So we're not just trying to get you to say, oh, this is a fight. No, we want you to be better and, and want the kids to be happier. It's just not like nice on the ears, like it, oh, like agreeable. It just can't say things that are agreeable when it's not, you know, indeed representing, you know, the truth. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And and, and that kind of goes back to when I said cause and effect. Mm -hmm. Women and men have to talk. Communication is the key to success. It, it now. It may down the road change, but that's only if you stop communicating. Because if you're communicating and truly communicating, everyone knows what's on everybody's mind. Mm -hmm. Because what, what I've heard on a lot of different things is people saying shit because they think that's what they're thinking, but not really asking them. Oh, well, based on their actions, I think so they, that's what they're doing, what they're thinking. But did you fucking ask them? If you didn't ask them, that's an assumption. And we know about assumptions makes an ass out of you and me. So mm -hmm. talk. You know, before get get past the cute and the and the pretty and all that shit, and find out what the fuck they're about. Can you just have that communication and know what they're really about? And if, and if women, if if you meet a guy, ask that motherfucker what he do for a living. And when you meet him, if he's telling, I mean, between jobs trying to figure that shit out, he's thirty some years old. Run, woman. It's it's like believing people when they speak and when they show themselves exactly. You know 
who they are. If a man, and this is not like to be a gold digger, but the certain type of car that a man drives does speak to how he's moving around. A man who don't own a car and he live in the suburbs, <laughs> it's, it's, that, that sounds a little red flaggish because it's like, well, do you have a driver's license? Do you have a job? Like, can you get car insurance? Are you like a reckless driver to where they took away your... Like, there are reasons why people, you know, adults in, in the suburbs don't have a car. And if you don't, you know, I'm going to need you to justify that. Because if not, it sounds like you are, you have the potential to be an irresponsible man and vice versa for a woman. You know, you come across, especially a single woman who doesn't have certain things by a certain time, you know, maybe she's not planning for the future, which does speak to a certain level of um, irresponsibility. It does speak to a certain level of lack of self-care. You know, people are telling you exactly who they are and you're refusing to listen and hear exactly what it is that they're saying a girl who always wants to go out to eat to you know super expensive restaurants um outside of the area that she lives in like <laughs> <laughs> let's keep it real you know she might not be the one that's super family oriented if her nails are done a certain type of way or you know if her edges are laid a certain that she might not be ready to have a family quite yet you know um, hairlines do speak volumes, like baby yes. hairs and all. <laughs> baby hairs and all. Um, That's very true. Yeah, so don't like ignore the signs and the conversations that you're having with people, and be upfront, y'all. Like straight up, tell people exactly what you're out here looking for. If you want to just have a good time with somebody, then have a good time, you know. But don't tell somebody that you want to have a good time. And that good time turns into y'all procreating and now you devastated because the man is like, what? You you having the baby? Like, I thought you was maybe on birth control because generally people who just out to have a good time have protect protected themselves. And whether the man has protected himself from procreating, um, nine times out of ten, he's looking for the woman to have done that part. And that's normally via some type of contraception. Um, absolutely, but that's, absolutely. that's that's the that is as I'm coming to understand the popular um situation that the men today are having with the women, and that they're saying that they're coming into a pool to quote unquote play, right? And a pool with women who are claiming that they're coming to play, right? That's what we're both communicating that. Mm -hmm. but Playing ends up to some serious ish, and that means us creating a child, right? Mm, that's that, true. At that, nah, plan B, that situation, and the woman is like, ah, clutching her pearls, like, how dare you? Well, because you had communicated to that man that you were here just to play, and now you're taking something from a playful situation into something that's very serious, and and that's just now a gray area. It is. Absolutely, the man could have protected himself if he decided that he wanted to play. So he certainly did get got, but he didn't get got like without knowing. So and now that's true. Yeah. So now we enter into this gray area where it's like he don't really want to take care of the kid, but you know, now he's financially like legally uh attached to this child. Um, and as you should, you put shit out into the world. You got to pick your shit up and take care of it. Um, but that's how we get into that gray areas because, you know, we communicate and, and it's not the truth. Oh, my God. That's so damn true. And, and men, I don't give a fuck if you're playing, not playing, whatever. Wear a condom. They're not doing that, Malcolm. You need to go ahead and shut your mouth. Listen, hey, I'm, telling, I'm telling these dumb motherfuckers, <laughs> listen, you either wear a condom, you dumb motherfucker, or pay the consequences. The cause is not wearing a condom. The effect is paying child support for, for 18 motherfucking years. And they, they never go away. Trust they, me. This Russian roulette out here. They, 
Okay, he paying man. What's your rule at? When you going in in that barbershop, go cut your motherfucking hair, and also the cop coming and say, "I'm looking for your motherfucking ass." Oh shit, child support. You run out the back door. I chase you out the back door, drag you inside the fucking courtroom. You go. You can't keep a job because that's the other thing about these different states now. Before people could just duck. Nah, I, you know, I ain't paying child support. Fuck it, they catch me. Well, now they can catch you because every time you go get a job, there's a paperwork they they follow the HR that says, "Hmm, let's see if you have any child support out there," so they can go and attach your money. So yeah. the fun ain't all fun when you run around and your pockets are tapped oh, every you, fucking and two you, weeks. You know, there's a few things in between, you know, the baby and the baby. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> the the the, the burning the and the diseases and all the yeah. other shit. Those so are true. And some of them are recurring and some of them don't go away. So okay. that is true. That in the game if you want to. Let's see, but um, it, it, or you can that, just. Your local CVS or Walgreens or your gas they have most gas stations have the protection that is necessary for <laughs> ladies and gentlemen can buy them. You know, I, ladies are allowed to buy them also. You absolutely. don't you have to have the man buy them. But men, it is that's your job to, you know, protect yourselves. And when you don't protect yourself and you give your liquid gold away for free and then you mad that she's attached you to herself for 18 years and you feel like, well, I'm I'm a piece of shit ass man. You know, why would she want to attach herself to me? Well, guess what? She's an even less piece of shit probably than you are. So <laughs> like, why not attach herself to you? Technically use the come up now. So you, exactly. you know, don't be dumb. Don't be no. dumb. No. And I think don't. A lot of times when the man gets emotional, in my opinion, he get real stupid, right? Mm-hmm. And real stupid. The girl done subpoenaed you to child support, and now you just sitting there like, oh my God, I can't believe I got court coming up in two or three months. You'll sit there and you'll be scrolling on your phone, reading every article from ESPN. You'll be still video gaming your life away. You know, you going to work, talking about something you putting in overtime. You will not, near not a time, Google nothing about no courts in your state that's dealing with anything that this woman has just filed paperwork on you. You will not inform yourself. You will not seek out information. Like nine times out of ten, the men are showing up and they're just blind. They now, are. They yeah, really are. I'm not saying that you should be able to afford legal counsel because some men cannot. And I'm also say, not saying that you need to be able to come to become um, like super well versed in, you know, legal jargon and all that other good stuff. But like some basic FAQs that are found frequently asked questions that are found on your county's, you know, court, you know, uh, website that, yeah, you, you, you can, you can go to your local county district or whatever, you know, the papers are filed in and just read up on some things that are your options and what's available to you um, before you just show up super blind. Because a lot of the men are getting taken advantage of, because they don't understand that you present the judge whatever you have to present them on that day. Mm. On that day. You don't come to court and be like, oh, well, I didn't know that. Oh, well, I forgot that. <laughs> like, what? No, today's the day. If you don't have it today in any court in the USA, how do you have to ask for it to be continued? Or the judge got to go off of what the information we have here today. That is true. They ain't gonna come back wait for that shit. They gonna wait. Or what? Go go back in two more weeks and come back with that information. Yeah, because you knew you was coming to court, so you didn't, you know, seek out information. You didn't see. Well, how can I get myself, you know, ready for the day? Like I'm gonna just show up blind. Why would? Mm -hmm. Like going to an interview and not, you know, Googling how to prepare yourself for an interview. Just mm. blind. <laughs> exactly. Put blind. That's what we do nowadays with a smartphone in our hand. We do stuff blindly. Nine times out of ten, whatever you're thinking about in your head, you can find it on YouTube. So you don't even have to read up on these things. You can literally go on YouTube. Hmm, how do I make a cake? YouTube. Hmm, how do I file my taxes? 
YouTube. Hmm. How do I file paperwork in the court? YouTube. Hmm. What could possibly happen in the court underneath this situation? YouTube. YouTube. And you probably how to ride a bike is on YouTube. Pretty much everything you even think about is on YouTube. YouTube University is pumping. And if y'all yes, YouTube to watch your sports re reruns and, you know, your little comedic relief situations, you're being foolish. Yes. You're being taken advantage of. Absolutely. And T, I'm going to say something that's going to just blow this entire goddamn podcast out the water. I'm talking to you men, directly to you. Get a motherfucking DNA test done. Go and get a fucking test done. Don't sit around and be the okie doke and shit and just say, I fucked her, so I got to be my kid. No, motherfucker. She can fuck many people. And you be the sucker she grabbed and put you on, on child support. And if you're a dumbass, don't go and get a DNA test, you'll be stuck for 18 years. Because if you sit there and think, you, I'm a thousand percent sure it's your baby. And y'all have y'all seen Mari. You seen Mari for all the 30 fucking years he's on TV. And if he ran a test or a statistic on how many of them women came back at the fathers that they said the fathers are the fathers, it's probably 50-50. So again, flip a coin. You may be or may not be. Spend the fucking money. Don't buy no video games. Don't do whatever the fuck you need to do. I don't know how much the money, how much it costs. Get you a DNA goddamn test. If the DNA test says yes, you're the daddy. Hello to fatherhood, handle your business. If not, then you take that. When you say you are not the father, you do your little two step and a jump and a flip and run out the motherfucking door, never touch her and see her again. <laughs> but some men won't. See, I think, I think to clean that up <laughs> as eloquently as you put it, <laughs> I think. I think we can sum that up to say have those super hard conversations that are that are going to hurt someone's feelings because you'd rather hurt someone's feelings today and be forgiven for you know being wrong later than to live 18 years trying to fight you know something inside of a court system or you know just having your heart trampled on later on because you were afraid to hurt people's feelings. Um, because generally speaking, if you've been with somebody and you not just ask them for a DNA test, but you're adamant about receiving this mm -hmm. thing, because that's basically what we're saying is that it's okay to insist and be adamant about getting a DNA test um, with your significant other. Um, and understand that perhaps in today's society still just re making such a request can deeply offend a lot of women, especially being in um, a sensitive and super emotional space while pregnant, right? You can deeply offend that woman and she might have some some shit to get over after, you know, making such a request. Um, but we're saying it's okay to you know, it's okay to go there. And we're just trying to normalize making those requests because why not? If it's true, it's true. If, you know, if that's your baby, then that's your baby. And exactly. if it, then let the person who actually should be, or let, if you want to be held accountable for another man's child, you know, let us just all be aware that that's what's happening. And that's fine. There's lots of um, men, not lots, but there's plenty of men who have signed up to raise, you know, their wives or their girlfriend's um, child from another man because of several different reasons. Um, and it's, a, you know, moving on. That's their family. Nothing more, nothing less. Absolutely. But, and, and the thing is, not to cut you off to you, but mm -hmm. just, and, and more importantly than, it, you know, and I, what I said, I said, but what we forget are the kids. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, those kids grow up. And mm -hmm. ultimately, those kids, you don't want to lie to those kids. If 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 you're the father, you're the father. If you're going to take that responsibility because the man who had the baby to walk away, I commend you, commend you to the max. 
but the kid has to not be surprised when it goes to get something like a driver's license or to get their birth certificate when they're about to go get something or get their um, passports and realize that the man that they thought was their father is not really their father. And that, and that opens up a wound because a lot of people say, I don't want to have that conversation. It's a tough conversation. You're going to have to have that conversation, mm -hmm. whether it's when they're, when they're of age where they can understand what you're talking about or before, hopefully before they reach the age of 18 and 19 mm -hmm. and they find out the hard way. Because then it becomes a lot. Now the kid thinks you're lying to him. They can't trust you. And now the kid has to go through a lot of things. So just always remember, no matter what the adults go through, ultimately the kids are the ones who suffers the most from lies. So and and, and we see it all the time. We, we see it every day in our own families. We see people who we thought were related to somebody and like, oh, shit, they're not. And now the kid got to deal with it. Because, again, you go to medical issues. It's deeper than just like, oh, that's not my father. Mm -hmm. They have some uh, medical issues that they need to deal with. Uh, they could have some diseases or blood issues that they have to find out who the father is. And mothers, this, I'm going to talk to you again. Be honest. If you did sleep with someone, just be honest. Just pour everybody in. If you slept with the whole football team, bring the entire football team in and let's test them all just to make sure we know who the father is. But so that sounds good. That sounds good. But I came up with the idea that some of these situations, you cannot test these men. They huh? don't know who they were. Hey. They don't okay. know who some of these men, they were in another state. It was just for the night. We don't know all of the circumstances. But somebody, how, he just got to be the father. Oh, I know. Because you don't have a clue in America who that kid's father could be. What type of night was she having? What type of night? Some of these women be having a night. They be, yes. Let's just be real. They was having a night, and that night got super elated, and... They don't know who this. That, yes, no, that's that's the promiscuity that we're talking about, though. See, and, and see. If I live with that, and then your kid gotta live with your shit too. You can never find that kid's daddy. And you oh never. god, oh, you, you was so gone that night. You don't even remember what old boy looked like. Oh god, <laughs> damn, T. And you know how sad that is because again, you don't pass that fuck shit, that fuckery. Onto your kid, your innocent kid, because you want to be whole that night. You want to go up there and drop it like drop it on a whole lot of people. And yep. now I don't know, I forgot. Well, the, the kid's the product of your fucked up decisions. So yep. at least write down a number, take a picture or something. You got a phone, take a picture of his ass. So you say, Oh, that's the that maybe that's the guy bang. Take a picture of all of them because it's not fair to the kid because you know what happens. You know who the father is. That the, the the family members start saying, "Damn, you don't you know because little ones, you know, because they talk. You don't know who your daddy is. The kid, what are you talking about? I heard your mama don't even know who your daddy is. And then you gonna ask the mama, and she go, and then she gotta be like, oh shit, I do, I don't know it. And that's not fair to the kid. That's not fair to the baby. You can be trifling all you want, but fuck, please, 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 take a picture, sub uh, a DNA print, uh, scrape some skin off him or something, and put him in a bottle or something so you can go back and find got, his ass. I got. <laughs> That I need. Yeah. And she rolled out. I mean, <sighs> that's all they wanted. So. Yeah. So again, ladies, ladies, just ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. we out there playing in this goddamn world of dating, in this world of relationships. This could get messy. It could get real messy for a lot of people. And if it gets messy for the men, you're going to end up paying a price for it. And for the women, you're going to pay a price. But in the end, for what? You had a few moments of fun. In some cases, I heard a few seconds of fun. And now you got a whole lifetime of his babies and all this other child support and, and, and all this other bullshit that goes along with it. And you're just part of it. What if a woman have another kid? So now you start baby, three babies, three baby daddies. So now the, the hit starts, to, the names start to grow. And you got everybody got a different last name. Again, it doesn't bode well to longevity or security within a family. Because again, all your brothers and sisters got la different last names, same mama, different last names. Eh, it doesn't it doesn't bode too well for that kid's future because as we go back to single mothers and this and they become not stable, 
the kids don't become stable. People just got to make better decisions. You know, again, you just can't rush out there having sex with people. You get to know them. Can you get to learn who they are and, and, and learn? No, they just stay cute and they sexy and they smell good. Can you just say, hey, can I get to know your background and, and, and talk a little bit before you start to have babies or get in relationships with people? Can you do that? Yeah, get get vulnerable in a in a space um, outside of the bedroom. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Yes. Uh, I mean, because again, if if we do that, then we'll be in a lot better spot than than we currently are. And a lot of people just don't want to take that time to want to rush into anything. Please don't rush into anything. Please don't, because rushing. Just look around you. A lot of people rush into a whole lot of shit, and now you see where they're at. They're like coming to you like, oh, I made a bad decision. And all they had to do is just stop just a little bit and then just say, hey, I I'm going to take some time to do this. Yeah, Wait, can I say that? Say? I want to say that two years is not a long time. Like, and when I, I say that because people like to get married after two years. People like to get divorced after two years. Two years is not a long time. So if you're doing something and you're doing it, you know, after like a two year situation, you might want to really think and reflect like what you did and didn't do with the, within those two years, because two years is it's not very it's not a very long time. No, no. And again, you may want to wait before you have sex again that don't don't look at don't it run as in a the challenge road. look at it as a challenge you know it's easy nowadays to just lay up in the bed that's that's the easy part but can you actually get to know this person and stay engaged and enjoy their company like do you enjoy that person and what they bring to the table outside of the bedroom hmm. oh. we hmm. don't know we don't know what that means now rather than the obvious the tangible now you're gonna learn about the intangible mm -hmm. because now you get to know what their makeup is not just the trojan horse but what's inside the trojan horse if they have you know morals and respect and, mm -hmm. and integrity and and character you'll learn that real quick mm -hmm. if you don't give them draws up ladies you'll learn about that real real quick mm -hmm. if he mm -hmm. has it or not because if he don't have it he'll be gone real soon and you'll say whoo I missed that one because you don't yeah. want to get, get caught you finally got the hard way as a lot of them do it's never good never good you know so what you want you anything you want to say t before we wrap yeah. up this episode no um i always say no but then have something to say ladies stop vetting these men off of their pockets <laughs> like yeah they can pay some bills <laughs> bitch you got to ask more questions than that stop playing <laughs> any man any man can send those send over that bull any man can send over that little cash app, you know, um, where they pretending like men flying them out of town, buying you something nice. That's cute. But what you want is a man who's willing to be invested in you. And it's more than financially, right? It's emotionally, it's um, spiritually, right? Don't forget about that part of the situation. Um, so when we talk about getting vulnerable and communicating and going deeper, you know, yeah, I need for you. Yeah, I need a couple little dollars. Don't get me wrong. I'm not telling women like <laughs> just to be dating without funds. But what I am saying is to go deeper and don't just let his money be the only thing that speaks for who he is and the type of person that he is. He's not standing next to God and you are standing next to God. Then you might want to find a man who has money and who also stands next to God because they are out there. But you need to have those conversations in order to see if that's what's happening here. Girl, again, you wrap that shit up again in a bowl. It's more than just sex, ladies. And men, it's the integrity. It's the more substance. than sex and money. More than that. Mm -hmm. Integrity, substance will, will take you a long way that money and sex can only give you just the tip of the iceberg. The rest of that is the most important thing, and that's the stability in all relationships. So, T, as always, girl, you always do what you do. You know, and with that, we're going to end this particular podcast of episode of On the Mic with the M. And see. Listen, people, you know what to do. Hit the like button, subscribe button, hit the little bell so you can go ahead and get the latest, greatest episode from us. And until then, peoples, peace and blessings.